In the last week, we took the container off that Huracan Beril blew on our boat. Today, we begin to repair that damage. Here's our new boat, African Dream. The first project we're doing is fixing this baby stay that broke when the container blew on. Basically cut it in half, still have the half over there. Um, and I've been thinking, how am I getting safely up? Because at this moment, because the container was also resting against the force stay and uh, cannot put tension on that right now, it is held by um, two lines, two ropes, at this moment, I do not want to use those, so I'm going to use the topping lift to get myself up. Okay, the lower stay broke in half, but is now still for 50% hanging there. I used it temporarily to tie down the mast. I'm going to wrap a rope or a line around the same area around the mast and then create a temporary lower stay to keep the mast from falling down. And so that in the meanwhile we can fix the lower stay. These are always the things, that's why it takes longer to do it because like, I have to go up the mast. And I'm like, like, I have to take the stay on the front off too, but you don't have to go up. It's like, okay, let's do it. Five minutes later you're ready. This is like a bigger, just a bit, a bit bigger mental step. <laughs> the first half I'm doing with a rope or a line and then the second half with a ratchet strap to add a bit of tension. Let's take the stay out and uh, let me take you up. I think we can just do it like this, right? There we go. Around the lower stay was an aluminum pipe for protection of the sail and because the stay had broken in half it was also stuck inside that aluminum pipe and pretty hard to get out. I had to use a grinder and grind it open. But we got it loose. Great. So this one is off and ready to go to the rigger. Now we're going to take this one off. As you can see, it damaged it here. It's not supposed to be pushed in. That is because the uh, container, the weight of the container. So we're going to replace this one with a new one. And then another day, this needs to come off to go to a welder. Yeah, let's take it off. The good thing about taking this out is not being in the water is you don't have to risk to losing it into the ocean. So now we're gonna twist this off because we're going to reuse this part but this is uh, pressed on so there's nothing to reuse there. Getting things done! So now we're gonna put this back because I know how this goes. You put it in a bag and then uh, later you gotta figure out where it was from. So I'd rather just put it back and keep it here. That's fine, it's not gonna go anywhere. Let's take the rest off. All right, this is ready to go to a rigger. Today I'm going to pickle the water maker. Uh, this boat has a water maker. I never had a uh, water maker before, so I'm trying to all figure this out. This is the stuff I'm gonna pickle it with. What is that? What well, is a membrane in here, a membrane, and that's supposed to, uh, if you don't put that stuff in it, when you take the boat for a long time after water, the membrane goes bad and they are very very expensive so I don't want that to go bad and apparently this one is really new so 
I'm using water to pickle it. Normally you would put this hose in a bucket of water, put uh, the pickle stuff in it, mix it, and then uh, you know you, you 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 turn the water maker on, and then it'll two buckets like uh, five gallon. It suck it it sucks it through, and then uh, you pickle that. But the thing is, in order to use this water maker, you have to run a generator. The generator is water cooled, and I cannot run it while the boat is out of the water. So what I'm going to try to do is use a bilge pump. It's not going to have the same force, but I think that's okay as long as it pushes it through enough and this is not normal water because apparently you have to use rainwater or watermaker water so this water comes from another watermaker from another boat because the tank here was empty so I'm gonna try it out and then it's supposed to come out of this water tap over here apparently the stuff is two scoops per uh, two and a half gallon so this bucket is about two and a half gallon and you should not you should be able should be careful not to inhale it and I'm also using a glove should be about right and then I'm gonna mix it a bit it's a bit messy here apologies so you tell me I'm gonna put it on and tell me water is I think it's gonna come out of here let me know if water is coming out, okay? Okay. All right, let's give this a go. This one can just go in here. All right. Is something coming out? Okay. You pasta nada? It did not work, so now I have the pump connected directly to the membrane first i prefer not to take the high pressure hose off but i did it anyway let's see if it works now okay also this wasn't very successful a little bit of water comes through but like a little little bit i'm gonna try to put on bigger bilge pump Got the rule 2000 on it now, a more powerful one, and um, it works. It's slow dripping. What I learned in the last few days is that oh, <laughs> in a bilge pump doesn't have a very high psi. This is a water pump, normal water pump, which has up to 50 psi. Psi is the pressure in which it pushes water. Um, so normally through this filter, I read on the internet, 80 PSI goes through. So I think this should be strong enough to at least be able to pickle it. Will it work? Will it not? We're going to see right now. I put the hose in, in the pickle water. Uh, the thing I forgot is that these types of pumps, they stop pumping when there's a certain amount of pressure on the system, you know, that's how they work. You stop pumping, you open the tap, they continue pumping, but a little bit of water is coming out. And maybe if I just leave it like this, when the, there's little less pressure, it will start pumping again. The good news is it's working. The bad news, I don't think it's really bad news. There's only good news, it's working. <laughs> See, it's coming out and um, just have to wait a day or two, but eventually it'll push it all through. I feel ashamed to uh, show this bucket because it's, it's, it's a dirty bucket. Uh, but um, yeah, supplies are still limited here, so we use what we got. Yesterday we catch some more rainwater. Market is full, now we're just gonna wait. Hello. Hello. Let's go over here. The light is good here. Okay, I make coffee for you. Oh. 
I just took the cap off of here. I think this is the pressure sensor. Maybe I can let the pump pump continuously and that'll speed it up a lot. Otherwise we have to sleep with this. Oh yeah! That's what I want. Yeah, look at that. Nice. I don't think these motors are really designed to do this, so uh, I, I couldn't come up with any better solution. But I've been using ice cream to, uh, to, to cool down the motor. I'm also taking these blue filters out to clean them, but my hands are too big, they cannot fit in. Daniela's hands are perfect size to clean them. There's this fan in the boat that, um, that blows air out of the charge controller for the solar panels and it's really noisy. So I gotta change that because otherwise you hear the noise on the background the whole time. Now I'm going to drill the triangle off and I'm gonna find a place to repair it. To do this, I have to take these uh, pop rivets out. All right, well, we'll uh, continue later. nearly nothing. I'm also going to show you how the boats in the mangroves look like a month after. Two weeks ago, we walked this exact same walk to the supermarket and I'd like to do it again to show you how it is different. The first thing I notice is that it's very clean. So it's very clean. Definitely wasn't like that. It's been cleaned. The Osprey Ferry and the other ferry there is, they're running at normal schedule again. Um, the only thing is, as far as I know, you cannot go with your car yet. That space they're using to bring in goods. And um, Smears and Spurs still here operating. So here you can get everybody can get water maker water. They are busy rebuilding. There's approximately 40 boats here in the bay. Most of the boats that are here they were in the in the mangroves when the storm hit uh, the rule in general is you can only be here if you have some type of business here like if you're either here for hurricane help or if you own a boat here there is of course still a lot of mass the rebuilding goes uh goes slow step by step there are two supermarkets here in the street two big ones at least and uh, the alexis so first we're going in and there normally there's an ATM over there, but that's still not open. So you do need to go to Hillsboro, the main town, if you need cash. Most of the fridges still not work. Um, there's some fruits and vegetables. There's more in the front actually. 
uh, we did buy this was full with eggs we did buy some eggs but they turned out to be rotten um, fridges here are still empty and over here they're full some of them are working not all of them for the rest for the rest everything else is pretty um, pretty stocked up all the dry foods there have been speculation that the electricity would be go, would go on again in the next week or so they're working very hard on that but you know with the amount of poles um, broken and then probably also wires broken there will be a lot of shortcuts I think it's going to take a while let's go to the other supermarket since yesterday you can pay by bank card again at the Alexis which is great because you don't have to go to town to get cash uh, this is all the supermarket so they actually do have fridges and freezers running and on two weeks ago when we walked here the beach was uh, there were a lot of things washed up on the beach it's all looking pretty clean right now the world kitchen is still providing meals for uh, for everyone who needs it and then we get to the pharmacy which has a generator running they seem to be pretty stocked so here's the pharmacy you can only pay cash still and apparently soon you can pay by car too okay i hope this was uh, interesting to you and uh, we'll keep you updated on the progress